Hey gang, welcome back to the big board. Just a quick little look at, we're actually on turn five now, a quick little look at uh, Solaferino. Is that the correct pronunciation? Solaferino. I keep putting an A in there. It's Solaferino, 1859. It's from Battles Magazine. A uh, little game, uh, a interesting and very bloody battle historically. Uh, not an era that I'm particularly familiar with. You, you've got the Crimean War and we're about to have the American Civil War. And so you've got this linear Napoleonic tactical thing going on, but with much more effective weaponry. You know, the guns are uh, much more uh, deadly. Ranges are better, et cetera, et cetera. So when you begin to play this, you have, well, I had in my mind a more Napoleonic style execution and combat system and what ends up uh, is just a, a bloody uh, pulping of uh, units but in an unusual way so we'll get to that in a sec so look the game comes uh, in this one and a half counter sheets uh, i'd say for battles magazine these counters are artistically very attractive but very disappointing in the thinness and also in the manner in which they will uh, punch out of the of the sprues. I was more than disappointed in them, but I do like the artwork on them and uh, it, they have a nice finish. They're, they're so thin uh, that you, you're gonna need a fingernail to pick them up, right? Uh, to get to get under, underneath them, they're, they're a little tricky to grab. <clears throat> Rule book, it's in the standard format for magazine for the magazine and the, the page size and all that sort of stuff so you're going to want to get get online if you're in the u.s and print the the rules on you know the proper proper sized when i say proper you know american sized paper and at least they have that uh, option so you can do that makes life a lot easier for me anyway i uh, just i find uh, it uh, just more convenient so map Let's deal with the map because I had a, I got a little fussy about the map online a little while ago and I posted a couple of pictures with the the terrain details. Going from darkest to lightest up in height, there's a couple of little gotchas at level uh, three. So there's zero, um, one. See, this is going to be four here, and then, but there's no steep side, and then there's a color, another color. I'm trying to find it on the map. Here it is. Here, let me. Oh, here it is over here. That's good. These here are three, and so I'm expecting the colors to either be uh, light to dark consistently, or dark to light consistent consistently to go up in or down uh, in height, and. The colors, it's probably best just to show you the tech. The colors here, you know, you've got dark, lighter, lighter still, and then kind of a dark color, and then a really light color, and then there's the slopes, which it just kind of threw me in. And I, I found myself, uh, as I have continued to do for the last four turns, double checking every time I'm moving to see whether I'm up higher or down lower, particularly uh, when it comes to combat, right? There's some line of sight stuff that has to be done with uh, cannons and bits and pieces. So that was kind of fussy, but overall, I, I like the map. It's functional and it looks good. Uh, I could see myself chopping all the bits and tables around the edges off and framing it up. It looks, looks kind of pretty, uh, but um, other than that quibble, it's fine. So gameplay, it's chip pull. First four turns though, all these Austrian guys have to roll underneath their command level, uh, modified by their uh, capability here. Uh, sorry, under their command level. They've got to roll a die and achieve a six, uh, and they get to adjust it with uh, with this number here, I believe. Or is it, uh, no, it's, um, I'm sorry. Yes, this number here, the red, red circle number. So that, uh, that will make it quite difficult for them because they also get a, a, a malice applied to them for the die roll as well uh, for the first four turns. 
So all these guys are assumed to be stuck in place, very difficult to maneuver and move. And so it's kind of a free for all for the French and the Piedmontese to kind of get in there and get amongst it. We just got Napoleon's guard uh, in, Napoleon III's guard in up here. And they have uh, started doing their thing. They're fairly powerful, which kind of leads me to given it's so given it's chip pull, you, you're pulling a lot of these chits and really nothing's happening with them. And then you're really letting the, the French do their thing for the first four turns. We went through the exercise of rolling the dice for everybody to, to see who would get to activate, uh, did all that. But I think you could almost, you know, you could almost skip. <laughs> unless they have a strong leadership factor like two here, uh, uh, you would need to roll a five or a six to be able to activate. Uh, these guys had a, a two as well, so they got to activate at least once. But you pull all these chits, get after it. It's all pretty straightforward from there. Movement, everyone has four movement points. Cavalry has six movement points. Artillery have three movement points. Uh, formation commanders and commander in chiefs have six and eight points respectively. Uh, the and then so it really, the game really does place you in a role where you're the overall commander, uh, but dealing with each individual core or formation, as the case may be, and and working out tactically what you're going to do. There's very limited value other than uh, in tactic tactic wise. It's mainly terrain stuff, and I think there's one flanking bonus here somewhere. Yeah, uh, a minus two. No, that's a benefit to the defender. Oh, well, there's a there's a there's a there's a bonus here somewhere for uh, for flanking, but it's really a full on face head on smash mouth type of battle system. And then you've got this table where even with just two factors, each side gets to shoot or fire at each other. Uh, and that is your, your that's both a, it's defensive fire and then the other guys attack and then there's this, and that's the melee. So defensive fire, let's say you have two factors, you've got a 50% chance of causing some sort of disruption to the enemy's attack. And if they're attacking with six factors, you just use the six factor uh, rating, unless it's a combined attack from multiple hexes, when, in which case you might have eight or more, but you're guaranteed from five onwards to get a result. Pretty deadly. And these, these um, T results are basically a morale check and you have to uh, roll a six to a net six in order to stay in your hex and not have to retreat and become disorganized which flips you over like this guy here. So very deadly and very easy for a quite weak unit to force an enemy to retreat. So you really have to attack from multiple hexes so that you have something left adjacent. And you can split your combat factors up and spread those, those com combat factors around. So you could take a six rated unit and fire two into here, two into here, and two into here. Uh, to uh, spread spread the uh, f the effort of firing de defensive firing, or you could just pile all your factors in, into one hex, be guaranteed a result, and then hope that you'll weather the, the the fire from the other hexes. So a very different combat result system. Each unit gets two steps, uh, generally speaking, and you just put this minus one marker on it, and then when it's got another, you put. Oh, that's minus one marker. Then when it's got two two steps lost, you take the unit off the board. But that doesn't appear to affect the combat values of the units at all that I could see in the rules. So a very deadly, uh, very easy combat system to use once you get the hang of it, because it is a little bit different, uh, just a little bit different. Um, where were we? I talked about roles. Obviously, there's a full information. There's no hidden information in this other than what what formation is going to activate. Most of the VPs are going to be generated by capturing locations that are in red here on the map. And there's several of them. There's some over here, some here, and there's a dude here, one here as well. So you're going to want to try and grab those, those hexes. 
There's more units to come on in this battle, but I think they're mostly Austrian. Uh, I'd have to double check what else comes on, but we've got these additional units coming onto the board. I think these top, these bottom two are Austrian and these two are French. This one is French coming on. It feels like the French are vastly outnumbered and once these guys are allowed to start activating, uh, I, I think the French are going to be in trouble. And then historically, they won. Uh, even, you know, this is a very broadly spread out, very disjointed battle across a very large area. Uh, and it was also one of the most significant losses of the time in terms of casualty rates. So maybe it's just supposed to be a big, deadly, swirling battle, but I don't understand how the French are going to actually win this with the limited forces they have. They uh, have a, a very tight uh, amount of units, even though some of these, these units are significantly better than their counterparts. Can't really talk to you about the granularity of the, o, uh, the OB here, the order of battle. So you're gonna just have to, we're gonna have to trust that it's, it is accurate because uh, I know very little about this particular conflict in detail. I mentioned the, the combat and uh, conflict resolution uh, model here. Fairly straightforward. Supply is critical. Well, not critical. Supply is uh, important, and so is command. Uh, you've got to be within a certain number of movement points, and you have to be able to trace back to your leaders and your ultimate leader as well. Otherwise, you're then having to uh, do individual initiative-based type roles to, to activate. Uh, can't give you... It, the, where the game starts to sort of thin out for me so far uh, at the moment because I've got a couple of new games coming in that I need the space for and this particular part of my table is going to have to be cleared uh, because I'm super excited about what's coming. Uh, that said, the historical narrative and the general narrative here, it really starts to thin out for me, A, because I don't have the historical chops and, and background knowledge, so that's no fault of the games. So I can't really tell how things are going. I have read about the battle, obviously enough, and I've looked at the map and looked at what uh, the articles have said about the battle, uh, but uh, it, it hasn't really sort of gelled and connected with me. The narrative from a combat standpoint and a move, maneuver standpoint it's fairly, it's fairly ordinary. It's probably the word I would use. It's not bland per se, but it's just, it just is what it is, and it's not generating a uh, oh, you know, the guards cavalry charged in and had a massive attack and got super lucky. They charge in, get shot at. They might take a loss, and uh, they might not. Uh, or they're and they're coming in, and they are absolutely going to do something to the enemy, and that enemy will more than likely retreat and or take a step loss. So you, it's kind of predictable from that standpoint, I think. I mentioned the components of the game. The rules were fairly straightforward once I got my head around this uh, D6 business in terms of uh, sixes are important and ones are bad. Uh, so I thought that was fine. Uh, and I found that the action in the game so far uh, has been interesting, but not enthralling. Uh, so all in all, for a magazine game, it's okay, you know. I, I can tell you right now, it's it's better than you know probably seventy five percent of all the magazine games I ever played from SBI or Decision Games. It's got that going for it. Is it the best Battles Magazine uh, game I've played? I don't think so, but it is quite good. And I think with uh, a more robust playing and finishing the, the game off and seeing what happens in the later part of the battle. Pardon me, I just popped the camera. You keep in mind we're on turn five of 14. So we're you know, just over a third of the way through. Uh, I may get one more turn in, maybe two. The turns do go, well, well they were going quite quickly because uh, we weren't able to move all these guys. Uh, but I can certainly see that each turn now will take a little bit longer because of the activations, uh, the increased number of activations that we'll have. Anyway, so there you go. So we'll see how we do. But I uh, thought I'd just give you my quick uh, thumbnail impressions of this title from Battles Magazine uh, and we'll uh, kind of leave it at that and we'll look forward to catching up with you soon. Cheers.